Welcome back. The new House Select Committee on China will hold its first hearing tonight as tensions between Washington and Beijing escalate. Notably, concerns about China are a rare area of bipartisan agreement on Capitol Hill as the committee looks to address a range of issues, including military challenges, economic competitiveness, and human rights. Chairman of the China Committee, Mike Gallagher, telling the Washington Post tonight's hearing will kick off a two-year effort to map out a way to, quote, selectively decouple the U.S. and Chinese economies. Joining me now is a member of that China Select Committee, Congressman Dan Newhouse. Congressman Newhouse, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me, Kristen, and putting some light on this very, very important issue. Absolutely. Well, let's start right there. And with tonight's primetime hearing, what do you hope will be accomplished tonight and with this hearing overall, and with the well, committee overall, I should say? Well, um, this is our first hearing, as you know, and it's in the his historic hearing room where the Watergate uh, hearings were held a, a generation ago. So that tells you how significant and important that this is to the United States Congress and to the country. And titled uh, the, the threat that Communist Chinese Party um, poses to the United States, this hearing I'm hoping and I'm looking for those things that we maybe are aware of and maybe things that we are not that pose a threat to our country. And um, I'm hoping also that we can learn some of the weaknesses that we as a country um, share that, that make us in a, in a more precarious position because of those threats that we're going to learn about. There, there's a lot of information here for, I understand, non-government witnesses from various walks of life. So this should be very, very interesting. Congressman, there is a lot of talk about bipartisanship, and you point out that it was held in the same hearing room as the Watergate hearings were held. Do you think this will truly be a bipartisan effort, that we will look back in two years and say that this did truly live up to the spirit of bipartisanship? I'm very hopeful that that's exactly the case. You know, I'm very good friends with most everybody on the committee. The, the leadership uh, of both the Republicans and the Democrats in the House chose what I consider very serious-minded, sober individuals that are, want to take a hard look at these issues. There are not going to be a lot of uh, uh, bomb throwers, a, a lot of mm. headline makers, people that are in it just to appear on news programs like this, but to make sure that we get down to uh, the important facts and, more importantly, what we as a country do in response after learning the challenges that uh, we see from com the Communist Party in China. And when you talk about potential actions, I wonder if there is already any discussion about potential legislation, for example, that you may want to get passed over these next two years to address some of the concerns that will undoubtedly be aired. Well, being this first hearing is, our, uh, is going on tonight, we're going to be learning about all of those uh, opportunities, or I should say obligations, that we as a country should, should undertake in order to better prepare ourselves for a very competitive environment with a, a, an economic and military power like we see in China. So I'm anticipating that there will be some things that we'll want to do to improve and strengthen those weaknesses that we're going to learn about. Um, so yes, stay tuned for some, I think, some very important concrete work ahead. The committee chairman, Mike Gallagher, said the committee will try to map a way to, quote, selectively decouple the U.S. and Chinese economies. A lot of members of the business community are saying, how is that going to work? We've been told to do business with China over the past several years. How realistic is that goal? Well, I think we learned over the last couple of years during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we are inordinately dependent on foreign sources for some, some very important uh, items in this country. And I think we need to be smarter about that, be more strategic, be less dependent, particularly if those sources are from countries that are not necessarily our best friends, uh, because that really puts us in a precarious position, whether you're talking about uh, face masks or hand sanitizer or critical minerals that are necessary for uh, advancing our manufacturing industry into the future. So I think there's some strategic things that we can do to partially decouple economically from China and, and spread our business around the globe. I think that that would have a lot of benefits 
uh, in other ways as well. So uh, that's one of the areas that I'm, I'm hopeful that we can make some progress in. I do want to ask you about the Biden administration's stated concerns that China is considering sending uh, lethal aid to Russia to aid its war in Ukraine. If that were to take place, what do you think the repercussions should be? What should the consequences be? Well, that would be a very concerning situation if we found that Russia and China were teaming up against the West in, in Ukraine. And I think that that's, that's not where we want to go. That's not where we want to end up. We're, we're hearing from uh, Xi Jinping privately or in public settings, I should say, uh, something quite opposite than what mm. some are saying we're hearing in closed door meetings. And so kind of a confusing um, message that we're getting to this point, but that's something that we're, we've got to work very hard to avoid finding ourselves into that position. G given the confusion, should the Biden administration uh, reveal what and declassify the intelligence behind their concerns? Did they? No, would you like to see them? They oh. have not yet declassified. Do you want the Biden administration to declassify the intelligence that they say leads them to believe that China is considering giving lethal aid to Russia? So I think at this point what definitely has to happen is members of Congress need to be more educated, more aware uh, of what the situation actually is so that we can make intelligent decisions on how best to prepare and best how to how to respond. And I think at that point, uh, then then we can make those determinations on what further actions should be taken. So, and just to try one more time, would you like the administration to actually declassify the intelligence? Is that the right move? Is that the most transparent move for the American people? So I, I think, Kristen, on so many different issues that this administration has, uh, looking at the COVID-19 origins and the things that were kept from the American public, I think absolutely we need to have more transparency. And this is this China-Russia relationship is something that the American people absolutely want to know more about. Yes. Well, and you take me to my next question, which is the Department of Energy's findings with low confidence they have assessed that COVID likely originated and mistakenly leaked out of a lab in Wuhan. What do you make of those findings? The Biden administration says um, that there is no broad agreement still on where this came from. Do you think we'll ever conclusively know? You know, it's interesting. You know, over the last several years, uh, myself and many of my constituents and many of my colleagues, too, have been making the same assertions. It looked to, to us that the evidence was quite clear uh, as to the or, or originations of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, and we were, we were laughed off as being, you know, unreasonable. Oh, you're just jumping to conclusions. And now, all of a sudden, it seems to be from different sources, either a, a varying degrees of confidence that, yes, this is in fact what happened. And so I, I think we truly do need from this administration more clarity, more transparency. The American people deserve to know. And then we, as a country, and the rest of the world as well, will know better how to respond uh, so that we can prevent this from ever happening again. And just to underscore, the White House says there's still no broad consensus on the origins, but that is a new data point. Congressman Newhouse, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.